Welcome to Sunday Worship Church. As we continue, uh, as we just worship the Lord this morning, why don't we go ahead and just uh, prepare our hearts for praise. It's going to open us up in prayer as we worship the Lord. Father, I just want to thank you so much for this time, Lord. Um, I'll be uh, that we are at our homes, that we are in different areas, that we are not all together at, uh, at one building. God, that we would worship you, Father God, in the same spirit, the spirit of, uh, in spirit and in truth, that we would worship you, Father God, in one voice as, a, as your church, as a people, Father. Lord, just give us a heart to praise you right now. Just give us a heart, Father God, just of joy and of adoration for you. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Why don't we just go ahead and worship the Lord together, put our hands together.
rescue, that he can save us, that he that has won, already won the victory, that he has won the war. That although that we although that we struggle against our sin each and every day, although we may fear that we may doubt the world, we may doubt our lives each and every day, but just one aspect or another, that the Lord has already already won the war. We can take hope in that. Church, why don't we just sing this chorus together? I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle.
Child. 
child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear, and I am a child of God. God, we just declare that we are no longer slaves to fear, to doubt. We are not slaves to those things anymore. For Lord, we know, God, that you are in control, that you are sovereign. We thank you, God. In Jesus' name we pray. service. Um, so those of you who are actually listening, uh, I want you guys to treat this uh, service as actual live. Uh, not like you guys are here um, and worshiping with us. Uh, <clears throat> and so if you guys are watching on your phones, please, if you guys text messages or Facebook notifications or Instagram notifications or anything like that, get, you know, don't ignore those. Pay attention because this is your act of worship as well. Uh, so just treat that as, you know, treat this time as actually you worshiping, uh, as if you're here and worshiping with us, all right? And so the second thing I would like to actually announce is um, that we have a podcast going. So if you guys are have any questions or if you guys have anything you guys want like to talk about or ask or anything like that, just you know, let, let me know, and we'll, um, uh, we'll, we'll talk about that, and the podcast is going to be good. Um, and lastly, obviously, since right now, I cannot really uh, give, you know, like, hand out the offering, offering basket or anything like that uh, virtually. It's not possible. So, and those of you who are very tech, tech savvy, and I know some of you are very, very good at computers or, you know, all that stuff, technology better than your parents. Uh, I want you guys to go to help your parents uh, give offering online. Go to our church website, lolmc.org, and at the very top of the of our website, you're going to see a little blue button. It's going to say offering. Click that and... It's going to uh, just prompt you how to do all those things. Help, you, help out your parents because I'm sure uh, they're a little bit confused. They don't know how to do things like that. So help them out, and that would be great. And if you need to translate for them and how to do certain things, please do so. I think that you can help them out. All right, so uh, let's get started with the message. So I'm sure right now so a lot of you guys are on spring break, right? And um, even though you guys are on spring break or maybe some of you are starting next week or you guys are having an extended spring break or whatever the case is, uh, if, but even though you are on spring break, it doesn't feel like spring break because you're stuck at home um, and <laughs> you're, you're bored out of your minds, right? And <clears throat> some of you are maybe freaking out. Maybe your parents are freaking out because of this virus situation or whatever and everyone's panicking. And I'm not sure if you guys have ever gone to the store lately. I went to the store a couple days ago and people were panic buying. They're buying things that they normally wouldn't buy. I went to the stores, I went to multiple stores, and they're all completely empty. And they're panicking, right? And um, some people are buying uh, um, a whole year's worth of toilet paper, paper towels, water, and all that stuff. And I'm just like, how much toilet paper do you need? Do you really need that much toilet paper to, 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 to use, really, right? And I think the main reason why people are doing that, or panic buying and start panicking and all that, is mainly because people are losing this thing called hope. Is this, then that's the big H word that we're going to talk about today. We're going to be talking about hope. And I think now, especially right now, we need a lot more hope. And so today, we're going to be looking out of Hebrews 11. We're going to keep on uh, uh, walking through Hebrews 11. So open up your Bibles, if you have your Bibles with you, to Hebrews 11, verse 22. And we're going to be talking about Joseph today. And <clears throat> there's a lot of things that we can actually learn from Joseph because Joseph's life was filled with pain, filled with hardship. But God was there with him. God was alongside with him. And so he says here, um, it says, by faith, Joseph, when his and was near, spoke about the exodus of Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. All right, so it starts here by the two famous words, right? By faith, by faith. And so right away we could say that Joseph had faith. Because if he, he didn't have faith, and he, like the writer of Hebrews wouldn't have written anything about Joseph. So by faith, Joseph had a lot of faith. And it was continuing on with this, this lineage, this family of people who had a lot of faith. 
And so it kept on passing down this faith more again and again and again and again. And finally, we're at the very end of Genesis 37 to 50. And there's a lot of things we got to cover, so we're going to go through it, I'll go through a lot of it. And I'll, I'll be grazing through it and not uh, be talking about it in detail. Um, and so we've been reading out of Hebrews 11, and all, all about Hebrews 11 is about trusting God. In other words, having faith, right? about trusting God. How much do I trust God? And I realize the more I live on this earth, the more this world is trying to pull me away from God. It's trying to be distracting me from God. And the devil will do everything and anything it can to pull us away from God. And what the devil does is use all of our sinful tendencies, sinful nature of our hearts. When we start questioning God, the goodness of God, something small happens and we start asking, is God real? What's going on? And maybe even this virus situation too maybe some there's so many people actually that left the faith because of this virus right and so i think joseph this story of joseph lands perfectly for our situation right now what we should be doing when life gets crazy because if you guys know about joseph's life it gets quite crazy right and so by faith joseph so let's talk about joseph right uh he trusted God. He had so much hardship, so much uh, trial, so much tribulations, and maybe so, a lot of you guys, I talked, I talked to much, multiple of uh, some of you kids, and a lot of you guys are saying, oh, actually, I like watching K-drama, that's my hobby, or whatever, or, right, but I believe K-drama has nothing on Joseph, right? K-drama has nothing on him, because first of all, he was betrayed by his family, he was betrayed by his family and sold off into slavery. As a 17-year-old, he was sold off as a slave. A lot of times whenever we think of these stories of the Bible, we think of like little kids, like 9-year-olds or 10-year-olds or something like that. But no, he was a 17-year-old guy. He was like a junior or senior of, you know, in, in high school, right? But in Genesis 37, he, uh, Joseph arrives into the scene. He's dad's favorite, and the brothers are all jealous of him, and they they're like, oh, you know, like, he's a favorite. He gets all the cool coats, cool everything. And that obviously favors Joseph the most, right? But I think Joseph, he didn't have this thing called nunchi in Korean. It's called, uh, it's, it's called nunchi, but in, in English, it's more translated to be common sense, social common sense or something along those lines. And I really think that he lacked that sense. He lacked that understanding that if your brothers or if some people are annoyed at you or angry at you, you shouldn't poke them more. You shouldn't, you shouldn't annoy them more. But he, Joseph, didn't know that. So he ends up going to his brothers and saying, hey, I had this dream that you guys are going to bow down before me. His brothers obviously get angry. It's like, what did you say? Right? But not only that, he goes up to his parents and tells his parents as well, hey, you're going to bow down before me too. Because that's what my dream said. Right? So all his brothers are really upset. It's like, how, how could he say that to me? How could he say that about me? About my dad? About my parents? Right? And so the parents, um, the, the brothers are very, very annoyed and decide to sell him off into slavery. Captured him sold him off in slavery, and lied to his parents that Joseph said. And now Joseph is miles and miles and miles away from his dad, his best friends, and his li the life that he had. Let's pause here for a second. Because I'm sure that Joseph, as a 17-year-old, he had a lot of plans, right? He had a lot of things, as per, uh, things that he planned. He wanted to do certain things. He had all these things, all this power, all this, you know, like recognition from his dad, recognition from the people around him. He was loved. He had things that he wanted to do. But what happens? Life. And let's be real. We as Christians, we have that same thing too. Me as a Christian, a lot of times we live two different lives. We have two, two lives that we want. One one life, one, on one hand, is the life that we thought we would get. And the other hand is the life that we actually have. We never thought that life would, would come like this, right? Some of us, we wanted that to happen, but this is happening, right? Nobody wants hurt, but hurt happens. And sometimes things are, good things are happening, but then bam, life. Life, hurt, betrayal, sickness, death, coronavirus, right? All these things start creeping in and all we're left with, a lot of times it's just disappointment, sadness, despair, 
We don't know what to do. We wanted certain things in life. We expected certain things in life. We wanted life to go that way. But what happens? Nothing. Nothing plans, goes according to plan. But yet, you know, like, and a lot of times we, as Christians, we're like, oh, yeah, I trust in God, I trust in God. But how, do we really trust in God? How, how often do we really truly mean what we say? And I think that's the difference between Joseph and us. Joseph, when he was sold off into slavery, he knew that he trusted God. And he knew 100% God has his back. Because all throughout his life, God was with Joseph. And, and Joseph, like seriously, it didn't matter where Joseph went. Joseph knew God and God knew Joseph. They had a thing. They had to think together. And he understood 100% in his heart that no matter what, God's going to be with me. My God, the God of my father, the God of Jacob, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, he, they cannot lie. He cannot lie. My God will not lie and I will trust in him and him alone. And that's why he prospers. No matter what happens, he's prospering. So he's sold off into this, as a slave, right? All right, God's with me. All right, God's with me. God's good. God's good. My God is good. He's at Potiphar's house. And he's like, all right, God's good. God's amazing. This is great. He's a servant for pretty much a billionaire. He has everything he wants. And also, not only that, he's like the, the head honcho of the slaves, right? So life's good. All's good. It's great. It's amazing. But what happens? Life. The owner's wife, the Potiphar's wife, wants to do certain things with him. Wants to cheat on her husband with Joseph. But Joseph, instead of falling for that, what does Joseph do? He, he runs away as fast as he can from her. Right? He runs away to, to, to honor God. But when the husband comes back from work, the wife lies and says that Joseph tried to hurt her had to do things with her. And so Joseph, he, in his mind, he's like, all right, I have a new life. I'm a slave. I'm going to do my very best as a slave. I have new plans, new goals, new aspirations. I'm going to do all these things. But life, again, a, life throws a curveball at him yet again. He's trying to honor God. And as he's trying to honor God, bad things are happening. So he's like, ooh, come on, what's going on? I, and I'm sure he, he, he had all these things, I'm going to do, do great things in life, and maybe I'll get out of slavery, maybe I'll do this, 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 this. But bam, life. Life happens. It was too good to be true. Guess what? <clears throat> the Lord was still with him, though. Even though that happened, even though he, he was struggling in that or whatever, he still trusted in God, and God never left him. Even he went to prison. He went to prison because of that whole situation. Normal people would have lost all, completely all hope from the very beginning. From the beginning where he, he was sold off into slave. I'm sure I, w I, I would have. But not Joseph. What happened, what happened to Joseph while he was in jail? He, even in jail, he was gaining favor. He was gaining favor. He was loving the Lord. He was being loved by the people around him and all that stuff. He trusted in the Lord Almighty. And that's something different about Joseph and us. Because let's be real, as Christians, we'll sing songs, we'll do all these things and say, yes, I love the Lord, I'll trust the Lord and all that stuff. But do we really trust the Lord? You see, guys, listen, if you guys are on your phone right now, being distracted, get off of that right now. Because I want you guys to understand that teachers, our friends, the people around us, people should look at us differently. Honestly, people should look at us differently. Because Joseph, whenever people looked at Joseph, people were like, huh, something's different. Huh. No matter what he's doing, he's succeeding. And Pretty much, you guys know that song, right? Like that rap song that says, oh, all I do is win, win, win. You know, that, 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 that's what's happening. He's winning no matter he, where he goes because God was with him. He's succeeding. Even though he was betrayed, sold off into slavery, even though he was falsely accused of something he did not do, he's in prison. He's still brought back up. He, why? 
Because he placed his hope, all his hope in the Lord, in God. In other words, he trusted, fully trusted the Lord. While he was in jail, what happens? He interprets some dreams of this one guy, right, of, of that one cupbearer. He's like, hey, uh, like, all right, so w- when, you, when you go to the king again to go to the pharaoh, hey, remember me. Please don't forget me, all right? Because life hasn't been easy. Don't forget me. But what happens? He forgets Joseph. And yep, so he's like, ah, oh, what am I going to do in jail? Two years later, Pharaoh, he ha- starts having these dreams, and he needs that, those dreams to be interpreted. No one in the nation can interpret those dreams. It's troubling him. But the cupbearer is like, ah, but I know a guy. I know a guy. Th- there's a guy who kind of said, hey, don't forget about me, but I kind of forgot about him. But now I remember him. And so he go- Joseph goes in front of the Pharaoh. And talks, talks to the Pharaoh and explains the whole dream, seven years of, of good, seven years of bad, and all that stuff. And now Joseph, finally, at age 30, he gets his new title. He becomes the man, right? He becomes the man. So here Joseph, it's been 13 years where he was, he thought he, he's going to live an easy, peaceful life. He thought that all these things... He had plans to live a nice and peaceful life with his family and all that stuff, but everything was stripped away. As a slave, he was going to live that good slave life. He was going to do all those things as a slave, but yet again, nope, that's stripped away. Everyone would have lost hope, and especially would have lost hope in God, but not Joseph. He believed, he knew with all of his heart, 100% of his heart, he believed and trusted. He knew that God will never forsake him, never leave him, never. He's only going to build him up. God's only going to build him up. And he trusted God for 17 years, for 13 years of his life, or however long that was, right? That God was building his character. God, if, uh, Joseph knew that God was building his character. He said, all right, I'm going through this pain. I'm going through this hardship. But I know that God has brought me through this. I know that God, Joseph actually said that in in Genesis 45. Here, Joseph, he's 30 years old. You know, he's four years older than me, but he's the man. He's in a very high position. He's interpreting dreams. He's winning. He's doing all these great things. So there's seven years of good years and seven years of famine. So the seven years uh, passed, so 30 plus seven, he's 37, right? So you matching is you guys knew that. And so <clears throat> I'm sure after, as soon as the seventh year happened, famine starts happening. So he's, let's add two, three years. So he's like thir- uh, 30, 39, 40 right now. Joseph in Egypt, he's in Egypt, his parents, his dad, his family is somewhere else. And everybody's actually going to Egypt for food. Everyone's coming to Egypt. He's the man. He's saving people. Joseph is saving people and giving food to people. Everyone's praising Joseph, right? But there's something that God does to everyone. Sometimes God forces people to, to, to go through certain truths to build more of our character, God sometimes will make you go through something called forgiveness. Have you ever had one of those moments where, you know, like you're thinking about something, you see something, you smell something, you hear something, or when that person wakes up, if you guys have siblings, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? That's where Joseph is at right now. He sees his brothers it's been over 20-some years, almost 30 years since he's seen his brothers. And his brothers are all old men by now. He probably forgot all about them. But the moment Joseph sees his brothers, he recognizes them. Even though, like, they changed so much, he recognizes and knows them. And I love the details of the Word of God because if you read through Genesis 37 to 50, we can see that even though so many years, many, 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 many years has passed, Joseph never really let go of all those hurt, all that hurt that happened in his heart. All that heartache, the, the hardship, the betrayal, all those things that happened, it's still, he's still working in his heart. It's, still, it's, still, it's there. And this is so amazing about the Word of God is because God doesn't use perfect people. You guys have to understand. God will use broken people, people who have a lot of hardship, who are struggling and all those things. God will use humans. Human beings, broken human beings like you and like me. 
Joseph is not perfect. It's not perfect at all. Just because you're not perfect, God's not going to use you, right? Joseph, he held a grudge for a long time. He had a hard time forgiving. He had emotions. He had all those things. And I'm sure, I, like, Joseph, when he saw his backstabbing brothers, his lying brothers, I'm sure he was filled with emotions. But he knew that God was with him. He knew that, that he's drawing in closer and closer to the promises of God. And at this moment, I'm sure that Joseph was crying out to God and said, God, I need you right now more than ever. I need you right now. And God, you alone, you're the one that can actually give me this peace, this hope. So imagine seeing the person, the people that ruined your life. <laughs> you're 17 years old or however, however young you are right now. And you see a person who ruined your life. How would you react? See, and all, so many people that I talk to, there's a lot of my friends and all that stuff. I, as a pastor as well, I see people complaining about this one thing. They complain about the life that they wanted to live versus the life that they're given. A lot of times people will cry and say, I wanted this life, but why do I have this life? I wanted this life, not this. I want that. Why do they have that life? Why, why, why not me? And many of us, let's be honest, we all have this idea of how life is supposed to be. This idea, this fairy tale, this fantasy, this this fictitious thing of how life is supposed to be. And here's what we think. We think that life is going to be pain-free. We think that life is going to be great. We never plan on losing a best friend. We never plan on your friends, your, your, your BFFs or whoever it is to gossip about you. We never plan on your family betraying you. We don't plan on your parents getting a divorce. We don't plan on, let's be real right now, we don't plan on the coronavirus and making your parents lose a job, and you're financially struggling right now, you don't know what your family's going to do. We don't plan on any of those. Joseph, he didn't plan on his family betraying him, being sold off as a slave, going to jail, uh, to, to, and being falsely accused and thrown into jail. He didn't plan any of those. But it happened. And he's going to meet his brothers too. And man, wow. God actually does an amazing, amazing thing through Joseph. And I think there's so many things that we have to learn from Joseph. And I want you guys to catch this truth. Joseph, he died declaring God, what God was going to do. Even, like, even though Joseph could not see what God is going to do, Joseph was declaring that God is going to do amazing things. Right? Because a lot of us, a lot of times, whenever we see bad things happening in our lives, we're just like, I can't see God. God must not be real. Oh, this is so bad. This is so, so stupid. I don't like this. Right? And I, even though it's, God seems not, not to be doing anything, God is doing things in us and through us and through all these situations. That's what Joseph did. Joseph couldn't see what the ultimate end goal. He couldn't see any of that. He couldn't see the exodus of, you know, the Israelites leaving Egypt. He couldn't see any of that. But yet he trusted the Lord. He put, placed his hope in God. And so let's, I want to make that part clear. The, the, the original readers of Hebrews, you know, they went to church. They heard JB teachers sing, you know, all that stuff. They, they were blown away. JB teacher, you know, obviously he wasn't back there, you know, back then, all the way back then. But, like, I'm sure they, they had, had their own experience of, of worshiping God. They were praise team leaders and all that stuff. They're worshiping God. I'm sure they had their own version of retreats, of high school retreats or whatever it is. They're all raising up their hands and saying, God, I surrender my life to you, Jesus. I trust in you. This is amazing. But they didn't plan persecution. They, they, they didn't expect the hardships to happen. They didn't plan you know, on the people that they were cool with all of a sudden hate them. They didn't plan on trying to live as an outsider anymore they, because of their faith. They didn't plan on hardships happening. Even for us too. We don't plan on any of these hardships to happen. But what do we do? What are we supposed to do? 
have faith. That's what the original writer, that's what the writer of Hebrews is actually telling us. Have hope in hardship. Just like Joseph. As, as we look at Joseph, we need to actually understand this. We need to put this into our own lives too. Let's be honest this morning. Because a lot of us, we have so many false, unrealistic, un, like unrealistic expectations on our lives. It should be like this, like this, like this, like this, like this, but it's not. So why? Why? And honestly, wouldn't it be great if there are no more hardships in life, right? Right? It'd be so awesome, so amazing if no more hardship was here on this earth. But I don't know about you, but that honestly keeps me longing for heaven. That keeps me focused on, on, on the future, on the prize, the prize that is Jesus. It keeps me focused on the perfecter of my faith, Jesus. So in our main passage, by faith, Joseph, when he, his end was near, spoke about the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt and gave instructions concerning the burial of his bones. He mentions the exodus. He says, hey, God's going to do his thing. I don't know what God's going to do, but God's going to do something amazing. This exodus is going to be amazing. There's going to be deliverance coming. Brighter days are coming, y'all. It's great things are going to happen. Joseph, at this moment, he was saying, hey, guys, I know it sucks right now. I know it's hard. I know it's not the promised land, but God's going to do something amazing. Trust in God. Joseph had extreme hope in God. He knew, right? He knew that God's going to do these great things. Joseph is considered a dreamer, but I think he is more of a hoper. He, had, he was the one who had hope. And I think that's the same with us. And I'm telling you guys, honestly, your lives right now might suck. You guys might be complaining about all these different things. Maybe school right now might be the worst thing ever. Your family might be the worst. Your school life, you know, like, if you go back to school, you'll be like, ah, oh, this sucks. Why am I here? All those things might be so bad, might be horrible. But I want you guys to have hope because brighter days are coming through Jesus Christ. In Genesis 50, to, uh, 22 to 26, Joseph and his uh, father's household remain in Egypt and everything, all, that's, all these things happen afterwards. His brother, you know, like at the end of Joseph's life, uh, his brothers come up to him and say, hey, please don't kill us. Forgive us. Forgive us. Please forgive us. And Joseph does an amazing thing and says, you know, I'm not in the place of God. I can't judge you. You go to God for that. You, you deal with that with God, all right? But later in, uh, in, uh, in that, later he says, um, Joseph tells his brothers and says, hey, I'm actually going to die. I'm about to die. But God... Think about this. Joseph, everybody in Egypt was rescued by Joseph. Everybody could have been worshiping Joseph. Joseph could have grabbed onto the glory and ran with it. He could have been like, hey guys, look at me. Look at what I have done. I have done these amazing, amazing, amazing things. But what does Joseph do instead? No, God. 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 Everything was for you, God. Everything is for God. Joseph understood it. Joseph understood what it means to have hope. He did not have hope in people. He did not have hope in himself. He didn't have hope in anything but God. Joseph understood the picture that it's not about me, but it's about him. That I can't do anything by myself, right? Whatever I can't do, he can do. When I, I, can't, I can't forgive you, he can. He can help me forgive. I can't save anyone. He can save. I can't deliver you. He can. I can't be with you forever, but he can. May his name be praised. It's all about him, not about me. It's all about him. If Joseph wanted, he could have said, all right, make a memorial statue of me or all that stuff, and people would have done it. But he says, I don't want any of that. Praise be to God and God alone. So he's like, I'm going to die. And God's going to come to your aid. He's going to bring you to a land of, to, to that land that he has promised. He's going to fulfill that promise. He's going to finish. He's, a, he's the finisher of our faith, fulfiller of our faith. So I'm putting my 100% trust in God and trusting him alone. Then after that, Joseph says, you know, he, he makes the Israelites take an oath and all that stuff. 
And at the very end, Joseph ends up saying, when God comes through. Think about that. Joseph ends up saying, when God comes through, guys. When God comes through. Where did that go in our conversations? Right? So many times we don't talk about when God's going to do amazing things. We just talk about, oh, yeah, this situation sucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if we're not careful, a lot of times we, we are in bondage of ourselves. We have freedom in Christ. Right? But we don't trust in that a lot of times. And here's what I'm going to tell you this morning. It's not if Jesus returns. It's when Jesus returns, all things will get better. When Jesus returns, all things will get better. When Jesus returns, I'll see God eye to eye, and I'll be reconciled, I'll be restored, I'll be healed, I'll be forgiven. And I'll know who God is personally, and I'll be able to hold him, and it'll be amazing. So Joseph, he did not want that fame when he was dying. And this is huge, because so often, so many people want that fame when they're dead. I want to be known. I want to be recognized. He said, no, I don't want to be known. I want God to be known, because he's the one who gives all hope. He was ready to die, right? And Joseph ends up saying, hey, I want God to be praised. If you're stuck on me, you're going to be hopeless. But if you're stuck on God, you're going to be hopeful. So my question for, for all of us is, why, why are so many of us put, putting so much pressure on ourselves? You know, a lot of times we put so much pressure on ourselves that we have to do so good in life and all those things. But we shouldn't. We should just have a secure a, a assurance in God and just trust God and, and be filled with hope in God. So this is why, honestly, guys, I tell, I tell you guys to pray so that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. Right? Because honestly, I can't follow you guys around. I'm not going to go to your schools and follow you guys around and start bugging you about every little thing you guys do. I'm, I can't do that. But do you know who can? The Holy Spirit. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit and you're doing something stupid, the Holy Spirit's going to nudge you like, and you're going to be like, Ugh, okay. And that's huge. At the end of Joseph's life, Joseph was saying, hey, I want you to take my bones. I want you to put my bones where God is. I want to be where God is even in my death. And that is the truth. If you walk with God, if you're trying to constantly walk with God, amazing, amazing, amazing things will happen. And here's that word, hope. Hope will happen. Do you know what Joseph did? Do you know what Isaac did? Do you know what Jacob did? Do you know what Joseph, um, Joseph and you know, Noah and all those people in our Bible, do you know what they did? They had that hope. And this is the very thing the, the author of Hebrews is trying to write right here. You have to have hope. Don't be hopeless. F be filled with hope. You cannot be stuck right here and right now. You cannot be stuck on the persecution, the hardship, and all that stuff. So let me close by reading uh, Romans 15, verse 13. And I think this is one of those uh, verses that all, the be uh, all believers should have highlighted, underlined, or memorized, or all that stuff. Because it pretty much says this, may the God of what? May the God of hope. Do you see right here? God equals hope. Do you guys, do you guys understand? When, when we're f filled with despair, God equals hope. When we cannot look into the future, when, when I don't know all these things going to happen, what does it say? Here it says, may the God of hope what? Fill you. May the God of hope fill you. In the old scripture, over and over and over and over, it'll say, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? Because the world, this world, is, let's be real, this world sucks the life out of you. Sucks the life, sucks the hope out of you. That's why we need to go to God and we need to be filled with the hope of God, with the Holy Spirit. We need to pray, God, fill me and fill my heart to the max. I want to overflow with you and in you. So it says, may the God of hope fill, fill you with all joy and peace. Think about this. Only God can give you peace. Only God can give you joy and peace. And until you have that, 
there's nothing you can do. We can try to to fabricate and have this all this hope or whatever, but we can't by ourselves. He says, "May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him." Guys, it starts with believing. It starts with trusting, opening your hearts up to God. Paul says, "May the eye, your eyes be open." Your eyes of your understanding be open. And at the very end, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in Him. So that what? So that you survive? No. He said, let's say that right there. No. So that you can barely go make it through things? No. He says, I want all of you to be overflowing. He doesn't want you to just exist, to survive. To, he wants you to thrive. You're meant to be a blessing. Ephesians 2 10 says that God has formed you long ago, not for, to made, made you to do good works. Not to just to survive, but to, to keep on going and understand who God is. May the God of hope fill you with peace as you trust in Him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Did you guys see that? We're supposed to have hope. very end it says by the power of the Holy Spirit Jesus said once we have once the Holy Spirit comes we're going to be filled with fire tells the disciples I want you guys to wait right here because without the Holy Spirit you guys cannot do anything you guys are going to have hardship you guys are going to have you know a lot of crazy things that's going to happen chaos calamity all those crazy things Without the Holy Spirit, you cannot do anything. Without hope, you cannot do anything. And maybe some of you guys need hope right now. We all need the hope. The hope of the Holy Spirit. We all need the Holy Spirit to fill us up every single day. I think more right now than any time else. So right now, I want you guys to close your eyes and meditate upon this whole idea of being filled with the Holy Spirit. Just pray. Pray right now. You might feel awkward. It's like sit, sitting where you are and your parents are next to you. What, who cares? Just pray. If, it, if it's a silent voice, go ahead and just say, God, I want to surrender my hands to you, surrender my heart to you, surrender my life to you. God, I don't care if you make me a freak for you. God, I want to be set on fire for you. I'm tired of living this life all by myself. I need you and I want you. And I desperately, desperately want you to fill my heart, God. I need more hope in my life. So let's have this time of prayer. Just praying. Let's pray, God. Ready?
have our home alive in him. And there's nothing that can take that home away.